What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to another RX-8 video. We are banging them out this week, trying to get this car done in the next three days to rip it at the track, and hopefully it doesn't snow because it is the third winter season in Tennessee, which means it's even more third winter in Kentucky, and we're going to the National Corvette Museum racetrack. If you haven't been following along with the series and you're new to the channel, this is my 2004 Mazda RX-8. It is Nordic Green, it is a six-speed, and it is a track rat track car. That doesn't mean it's not a nice car, it's just I bought it to use it at the track, and that's pretty much it. Therefore, rear interior, doing some things with the engine stuff that we don't necessarily need to keep for the street, like air pump delete. So, why we're here. In the previous video, you saw me take this intake manifold off, and we discovered that it was full of crud, super nasty, there was a whole bunch of carbon buildup down in here. All of this stuff was all grody and gross and terrible. And now we've got awesomely stuck on the in or stuck on the workbench, but super smooth back and forth action of the six port sleeves. You want to get in here and clean this stuff really well. Okay. I used a mixture of brake clean. Um, some B12 chem tool injector cleaner on a rag to wipe stuff off my blower from the air tank and We got all this stuff cleaned out these little screws right here. Okay are seven millimeter You can take those out be very careful when you put them back in to not break them there They have a shoulder. They're super tiny But you can take these six port sleeves out. There is a plug right here that will allow you to slide the auxiliary port rack out. Now it's like a rack and pinion steering. There's a gear that drives a, uh, a rod back and forth to open and close these. These I soaked in some kerosene and some fuel to get them clean. And once these are nice and clean, you put them back on. They are there's a specific one for this side and this side. Don't get them mixed up. Just remember when you take them off. This one has more of a actionable cut and this one has less of a, or they're different. Okay, you can see here. That one's rectangular, that one's not. We got the injector ports cleaned out. Moving up the intake, the SSV hole is pretty hard to clean out, okay? I don't have a parts washer here, so I had to do most of this stuff by hand. Little brushes, brushes like this work really well. Get in there and clean that out. Use the chem tool, kerosene, brake clean, whatever. Make sure it's nice and clean. It's really hard to clean out the carbon staining from your runners, which is this and this. So mine are still a little bit dirty, but that's okay. The parts that need to move and twist are dialed. The next bit you need to clean is the actual SSV itself. Get all the crap off of this thing. Make it look nice and minty fresh, just like this. So that when you stick it in here and it needs to work back and forth, it works flawlessly. The motor, you really don't have to clean it. It goes on the outside. Another thing, you might ask, how do you test this motor if it's bad or good? Typically, and I learned this from my buddy at Rotary Resurrection. I was asking him some questions about how he puts these together because I'm not an RX-8 expert. Is... Uh, He'll let the ECU throw a check engine light for this motor. Um, it cycles this when you turn the key off after a running, like when you turn the car off, it cycles that back and forth to make sure it works. And then that'll add the code to you the next time you go drive it. That motor cycling moves these, okay, through all this drive gear stuff. But that's the best way to check it. Use the tools, the ECU check engine light stuff to test that. Another guy commented on the previous video and said some of those, uh, some models of these cars don't have the switch here on the SSV to tell if it's working or not. Now, you can test the solenoids that are on this car. Okay, I've already tested these to know that they're good, but they're a simple two wire solenoid that clicks on and clicks off. You can see them right here. There's three things on the back with the Mitsubishi logos on them, okay? They have little hoses that go in and out. You can take, like your mouth, and blow on it. Okay, I think I have another one showing up here at the top of my toolbox somewhere. Yep, from like a turbo two or something. 
basically the same. You got your two prongs right here. You can blow in it, hit that with 12 volts, it should click open, and then it'll either vent it or go out this side, whichever it's designed to do. They are, there are some differences in how these operate throughout the years, but just so you're aware that you can check those with a power probe or just a little alligator clip and make sure that they are pushing air to the right place. So verify, these come in that way, out the top. They send air to the SSV and to the VDI, which is this one. This is the valve in the other video that I mentioned that I never see them dirty. They're high, far enough away. And what this one effect, effectively does is that high RPM provides you with some scavenging effect and some like supercharging effect from the closing and the opening of the rotors. Thank you to the guy in the comments on the other video for explaining it really well. And that's what that valve does. You wanna make sure that all of these valves are functioning perfectly, not getting stuck. So with that being said, I'm gonna clean off a couple of these little gaskets. I got my overnight parts from Japan because when I filmed the video taking this apart, it was Sunday, now it's Tuesday, we got our stuff here. Thank you, Mazda Tricks, for getting that stuff out. This is a new lower intake manifold gasket, which I will unbox real quick. Then I'll show you the assembly of this on the new engine for my RX-8, but largely, definitely not a new engine. So let's get to it. All right, guys, your gasket's directional. You'll see the imprints of the stuff on the one side versus the other. Wipe the surface off nice and clean. Make sure you got all the crap off of it. I went ahead and sprayed some fluid film or some silicone lube basically down into the groove here. Um, down into that groove just to make sure everything's got a little bit of lube on it. And uh, I'm gonna lay this thing on here. And then this gasket actually mounts to the intake manifold with these 412 mils and then once you have it mounted to the intake manifold you can mount it to the engine so if you extend or depress the vacuum cylinder push this down okay see that push down and then I have the end of the rubber hose in my hand if I cap that with my thumb and let off the vacuum cylinder see how it doesn't go back all the way when I let go with my thumb it goes back. That's how you know that this vacuum pot's working. I don't commonly see them leak, but you never know. Same thing, you can check it up here on this one. Hold that shut, holds this pressure. Done. Make sure they're good. Takes two seconds. All right, we're gonna put the intake manifold on. Make sure you have all this stuff clean. Make sure you've also cleaned out the six port grooves in the engine as well, not just cleaned out the six port sleeves, which I can do a poor job. We want to make sure that these go in and out nice and easily and that they spin once you get it in there. So let's put the intake man foot on. You will need to put your primary fuel rail, your OMP lines and stuff on prior to doing this. It's just way hard to get down in there to all this stuff um, and your primary feed line for the fuel as well. This is a deadhead system, returnless system. Now, Going back over here, I got this manifold all nice and clean. I went ahead and just threw some engine oil on the six port sleeves. So they'll have a little bit of lubrication while it's dry. They are gonna be lubricated just based off like the fuel and this that and the other that come in there as all this stuff's gonna burn off. So let me get these lined up. And that deal should slide nicely in just like that. Once we got it here, <coughs> make sure that it spins Make sure that it spins back and forth once you get the intake manifold just loosely installed. So when you're going to put the auxiliary port valve motor on, you want to make sure that you have the auxiliary port valves closed, which is turning this gear completely clockwise. Okay, so see here you're at 3 o'clock. You go fully to the right. There you're at like 1 o'clock. Then you take the motor with the gasket on it, and that gets installed right on that. Okay, the reason that you have to index that, okay, is so that the motor knows that it's closed. Y'all were looking the wrong way. Got it on there, locked closed, ready to go. This is on. 
Now I'm going to spin this engine a little bit and start putting together the primary fuel rail, which is already in there. We get the secondary fuel rail in there and then start laying the wiring harness in here. And that's where this is going to get really hectic, really quick. Okay, so the wiring harness is going to start laying in and making a mess of all this. And the injectors and all that jazz. It gets it gets really, really fun. But that is going to be in the next video. So finishing this thing up, getting it dressed up. We still got to do that and get this thing in the car. Um, so I'll go over the wiring harness stuff and get this thing installed in the car in the next video. Um, really wanted to just highlight cleaning the fifth and sixth ports, making sure that those stuff are working, making sure that you clean the SSV. Making sure that you know how to install this little motor here, where that gasket goes, and just testing all this stuff so you know that it works, okay? Like I mentioned in the previous video, you can service these two ports, right, the VDI and the SSV, without taking the intake manifold off the engine. They just come out. The SSV is a little bit of a pain to get out of here, but it does come out. Same thing with the VDI. Now... There's a guy commented that said you can remove the intake manifold with the engine in the car. And based on his comment, I wouldn't not believe him. But I think it's more work to do what he's talking about. So the intake manifold doesn't fit off the engine, right? It hits the frame rail. But if you take the engine and you loosen the passenger engine mount, so it's off, and raise the engine up and like tilt it over you can get the intake manifold out. Now, I think that that's more headache than I would want to invest into it and would rather just yank the whole engine out, do everything over here where you don't have like, like imagine you're doing that. You basically have the engine stripped down to a bare block anyways because you need to get the primary or the secondary fuel rail off of it. You need to disconnect all the wiring that's connected into here. There's just a whole lot going on and I wouldn't want to risk dropping a part into the engine, messing something up. So my personal recommendation Pull the whole engine, do it on the workbench, make sure everything's perfect, put it back in. That's how I would do it. So with that, guys, we'll see you guys in the next video. Comment below with any questions, and uh, I can make sure to answer them. And I'm going to get this wiring harness installed and get this engine, hopefully, sat back down into this really far, far away hole. So thank you guys very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. What do you say, Letty? You're wet. It's raining today, huh? <laughs> wet and cold. Wet and cold. No fire tonight. We had to turn the uh, little torpedo heater off while we're filming. Otherwise, it sounds like we're in an airplane. We'll get this thing finished.